Watson. I'm speaking to you from Takar Belmont Showroom in Uptown Manhattan, not far from Central Park. Today what I want to do is share with you a package that we're having great success with that includes some new products. One of which is the Class LED light. We introduced that last spring, the Evo unit. We introduced that this year, not too long ago, and also the Qualys chair. The only dental chair with a seven year bumper to bumper warranty. And behind me is a K66 cabinet. We've been manufacturing this at Koken, our cabinet manufacturing facility in St. Louis for about two years now. It's the only cabinet really on the market offered that gives you standard features like solid surface, sliding monitor mount, twin glove dispenser, CPU channel to the monitor, and a full wrap stainless steel base. So what we're looking at here is the total package we feel like uh, in the marketplace today with the cabinets going to sell for about 10000 less than our competition. Uh, one thing that really stands out when a patient is in the chair or a doctor is trying to work around it is the mechanics of the chair. Belmont's legendary double articulating headrest is like no other on the market. And it ensures that any distance is created by back tissue uh, in relationship to the back of the headrest, that distance is going to be compensated for by movement forward and back. So it's going to allow us to take different size anatomies, regardless of the bony structure in the back or the tissue, even females with osteoporosis, to make up for the distance from the back of the head to where the, the shoulders hit. The back itself, if you'll look from this angle, you can tell that you have from the middle section, which really does not usually interfere with any leg underneath the chair, we've angled it up about 10 degrees to the edges and to the back. The back itself is less than an inch and a quarter thick, which is going to be your thinnest back on the market today. The key is to have bony structure support here and have this compensating cantilever base, which ensures again that the lumbar support is going to be perfect. Now you're looking right down into the chair itself. This is our pelvic comfort track, which actually allows for the chair itself to roll back under to allow the patient to precisely have his or her lumbar support absolutely perfect every time. And the end result with the chair is when a patient is in a chair or a doctor is working around the chair, it has a real soft start and stop. So what does that really mean, all this collectively? A good example of it would be this wine glass on the headrest of the chair. And what I'm going to do is show you how you can move vertically the chair up and down and watch the surface area with no turbulence in the glass itself. And you can see the surface very much is calm, zero turbulence, and it stays in place. We have, as a whole, the most unique chair that's ever been manufactured in the dental marketplace anywhere in the world. Belmont's excited to introduce the new Evo unit. Uh, we have several features that are really perfect for today's market. As you know, swing mount is pretty common in the market. But what is uncommon is the flex arm that you're seeing me move right now that has maximum weight capacity. And when I say that, that means that ancillary products, uh, whether it be a Cavitron or a laser, we feel like the weight capacity on this uh, arm is going to be more than sufficient to uh, carry products on top of the head of the unit. The pivot points on the unit go from 90 to 90 from both sides. That comes in real handy whenever you're trying to move the unit down and the doctor's practicing say at 12 o'clock and he can pick up the hand pieces in a palm up movement. Belmont also designed a bar that really drops at an angle. It's about 25 degrees from the head, brings the hand pieces closer to you, and, and more importantly, in the heat of the battle, when the doctors are practicing, uh, sometimes they reach and don't look. So what we didn't want them to do is to reach too high into a hand piece. So we have separation of the top of the unit where the hand pieces are. Uh, that drop is critical. Punctures are pretty common in the losses, and this helps uh, eliminate some of that. 
something that's not talked about much is the handles to reach the unit to move it. You can see that we have our handles basically uh, in a diverted angle at about 10 degrees on both sides. Both have airlocks located right underneath them and they're sizable enough for ergonomically when your hand wraps around it and you can reach with your thumb and operate up and down movement with the airlocks. You can pivot these hand piece holders any way that you want. You can see that all the air and water knobs are in perfect view for the practitioner. We have silk screens on both sides to identify the uh, air and water. Uh, in the middle is a membrane touch pad that you can operate our Qualys chair or our Bell 50 chair. It does have the auto program feature in it. So virtually the same as what you can do with a Qualys chair with the exception of the swivel. The swivel still would be used off the Qualys chair. You also probably have noticed that the chassis has some pretty good height to it. And the reason we did that is we felt like uh, integration of technology is not the future, it's here now. So we do offer uh, bin air, electric hand pieces. You can use the touchpad here on the right side. Same thing on dense fly scalers, scalar of choice, cameras. We have low voltage connections inside the unit where you can integrate those within the unit itself. The unit head, has a lot of vertical height to it. The chassis itself, from front to back and left to right, still has plenty of room to place some of the integration uh, that I was talking about with different technologies. The ease of pivoting the unit is accomplished by a roller bearing assembly. Most of the pivots on the units, virtually all, are back here, part of the arm going straight down. What this does is give us much more free flow of the unit head. You can put it into a, a more confined operatory because you're going to have to pivot it happening underneath instead of over here, which creates a longer extension for the unit arm. Both arms, by the way, swing out, whether it be a left entrance or a right entrance. Always have your, your patient seat all the way back. Then you look at the distance between the back of the head and where our headrest is. We've already talked about the fact that it is double articulating and it targets the lower orbital area of the uh, head. So what we're going to do is split the difference and bring the patient's head back. The occipital bone is exposed in the back. So everything comes together in terms of the way the chair is designed, the compensating cantilever base. Usually a good indication where the pivot point is out of place is the upper body, and the upper body has clothes on, so usually it's going to pull or drag one way or the other. When that happens, the patient's back, the lumbar is out of place, and in a procedure longer than 15 minutes, they're going to start moving around a little bit because they don't feel comfort there. So I'm a dentist, I'm looking at my patient, that I know that I want to do a procedure, say in the upper left quadrant. As a right-handed dentist, the hardest area for them to reach is over here. A maxillary arch, of course, is on this side, and it's hard for them to see up there. So they're going to have a mouth in their left hand, uh, but for the most part, they're going to practice over here about 10.30 and their movements are really what causes their muscular skeletal disorders. They're right-handed, they're going to shift to the right hip, you're going to put pressure on the hip and when you do that, you turn your shoulders, left back, right forward, it's going to create a pretzel effect in your lower back. And if you never swivel the chair, the only other way to get over there and look at that upper left is to bring your head off your shoulders. So that combination of weight shift to the right, twist to your lower back and upper body, and then a mouth mirror, then a head over to look, is really what causes problems in the dental industry with our professionals. Okay, right now I'm going to swivel this here. We have twin touch pads, three pre-programmed positions. Everything is activated off of an unlock button. Then your swivel button, like I said, is electronic swivel. Using my pinky finger, I'm moving the weight of a light, a unit, and alarm with no more than my pinky. Zero, zero weight transfer from my hand or my shoulders trying to move the chair. The most important thing that you can do at this point is bring the maxillary arch back. Now I can look at 12 o'clock down into the oral cavity and I can have the maxillary arch looking back at me. And the neck actually does move this way too, so instead of over the patient like I did originally, Twist it out, pencil in the lower back, 
shoulders pretty much asymmetrical to the upper body. Now I'm practicing with my arms parallel, my head, shoulders, hips are in alignment, and I'm looking straight down at the old cavity, or at least the tissue area that I want to do a procedure on. And lastly, with the headrest, we pull it out, we push the chin down, then we bring the chair all the way down to the base, and the back up. So now the patient, or the doctor, relationship patient to the doctor, is in a straight line with my vision to a lower mandible. If I move to this point, and I have a swing mount unit in this case, uh, versus it was fixed, the chair itself back this way, then a delivery unit, if it's positioned when I'm practicing right here, I literally have to turn to reach the hand pieces. When you go 12 o'clock here, and then because the unit gives you a complete 180, it's gonna allow me to place the unit in a position where I can reach the rotary instruments without any movement whatsoever. Class one and two movements. If you'll notice my right elbow is pinned to my right side. Instead of reaching, anytime you reach out with your body, it's going to actually affect all the way down to your lower back. But if you keep your elbow pinned, this is the only movement you have. So if I'm picking up the hand piece with a palm up, as you can see, versus picking a hand piece up with my palm down here, it makes me pick it up, take my left hand, grab the hand piece, and come back underneath to put my hand to where I can use the rotary instrument. A big difference. So, in review, this particular unit is going to allow you to get to a 90 degree to your right side, keep your elbow pinned. We've already swiveled the chair. You have a membrane touch pad right in front of you if you wanted to move the chair up or back. And you have all your pre-position controls here. Not to mention your stainless steel tray is within reach, so you can put uh, support instruments, uh, files, ancillary products right here in front of you so you can reach it. We have covered everything from ergonomics to economics. For more information, contact your preferred Belmont dealer.